Welcome back to Zero. My name is Paul Martin. There's a saying in the business world that culture eats strategy for breakfast. All the plans in the world will not succeed if the team doesn't share the same vision or buy into the plan. Well, that same is true for the workplace safety strategy. If it isn't ingrained in the DNA of an organization, it will not reach its maximum potential. Now, one company that has worked hard and succeeded in making safety, whether at work or at home, a part of the way they do business, is Yara, the nitrogen fertilizer producer in the Moose Jaw Regina Industrial Corridor on Highway 1 near Belle Plaine. Now, one of those responsible for turning plans into action is safety supervisor Travis Furstel. He called it behavioral based. There's been some major changes over over 17 years. Uh, we've we've always had a, a, a very good safety record, but there's been some changes in culture and the way we, that we do uh, our business here. Uh, there's a lot more uh, focus on behavioral based safety as opposed to just uh, rules and regulations and legislation. There's been that change to a, a behavior change. It really drives home the point to our, our people or, or it, it really shows that there's been a change in that culture that people start to take these things home with them. Uh, safety starts uh, you know for us in our workplace and we see that injuries can occur at home where now that we're seeing those behavioral changes at work, uh, that carries on into people's uh, home life and we try to support that with supplying personal protective equipment, uh, some other safety products that people take home with them. So when they're mowing the lawn, they can have their, uh, their safety glasses on, their hearing protection, wearing steel-toed boots and shoes and so on. So we've seen that shift in just following rules and regulations and, and moving into more of a behavioral state, I guess. This is not a peel and stick or do it once and it's done concept. It involves constant updating, training, and challenging the premise behind everything the company does on this front. One tool they use is what they call safety days. We have lots of groups of people on the plant side. We employ about 160 people and each one of those groups comes in. So we've actually tailored our safety days to each one of the groups so that we're not uh, telling admin staff how to use SCBAs or, or breathing air and so on. So we've really tailored it towards each different group and we've actually built a matrix of what each department would receive in a, in a safety day. When people come in, once we have that matrix established, we would have people come in. So it would involve theory, a presentation, and then we would move into hands-on practical. So uh, for example, we would be doing SCBA training with our maintenance staff and our operations staff. Uh, we would uh, show them the theory part of it. We'd review it with them. They have had the original training, and then we would do uh, a refresher on them. So they put the SCBA on, they'd show us that they know how to use it properly and then we'd move along and we follow up with a with a short test just to make sure there's that uh, knowledge instilled in them by the by the end of the training session some of the things that I'm most proud of would be developing our safety days uh, developing our training even more so that we are keeping that education up and keeping that to the forefront so uh, when we do our investigations and so on training always comes out as uh, you know maybe one of the things that we could do a little bit better and we have done that we've we've moved forward with more individual training and uh, what we call our safety days is where we have people come in on an annual basis and we refresh them so we're pretty proud of that. Rob Myers is responsible for Yara's production units but he also has a special affection for the role of safety in the workplace. He's a member of an emergency response team and has constantly improved higher levels of education and training on this front. Since Yara has a couple of dozen plants around the world he can learn the best practices from all parts of the globe and then apply them here in Saskatchewan. It's all practice, practice, practice. So you start with the basics and then we work up to a lot of scenarios, uh, a lot of the courses. We do a lot of uh, exercises and uh, we try and keep our skills uh, honed up so that in case we need them, uh, we're ready to go. Uh, the way I look at it, uh, safety is sometimes an education process. A lot of the times you just try and explain and say, well, wh why do you think that's a better way and have you thought about this? And uh, try and make it a learning experience because we're trying to build a culture we're not trying to push people out the gate. Uh, there's times when that may have to happen, but really what your, your ideal goal, uh, from my perspective, is to uh, get buy-in 
and educate people and basically uh, the whole point of it is to, is to make sure they get home safe at the end of the day. Even visitors to the Bell Plain plant will see how safety is part of the firm's culture. Any guest must complete a short safety orientation before entering the facility, even if they're being escorted by a staff member. The team at Yara called the system safe by choice. They're proactive. They try to anticipate potential problems before they occur. Basically, they try to leave nothing to chance. Safe by choice is Yara's chosen way of working, and it means basically that I'm as the plant manager and all the other managers are obliged to make the site a safe work plant. I have to make sure that everyone can work safely, gets home unharmed. I also have to make sure that all potential risks are identified and eliminated to the extent possible. It also obliges our employees, our contractors, also our visitors, to comply to these standards and to proactively remind the co-workers that Yara insists on safety standards and that we want to make sure that everyone gets home unharmed. So we're extending the safety culture from I look after myself, I follow the rules to I look after my co-worker and I make sure that my co-worker is safe as well. We don't want to always react to something. We want to try and uh, anticipate some of the things that could happen on an industrial plant site and try to mitigate that by uh, being proactive in, in our orientation process. I try to relay that information to them to, to say that there's some backing behind why we have our rules and we try to enforce that because when we've built our safety manual or safety manual addendum, we have our policies. It's like occupational health and safety legislation. Most of that stuff is written in blood or so there's been a fatality or there has been a, a serious injury because of it. It's not just there because uh, somebody thought it was a good idea. Yara Bell Plain is a signatory to the Health and Safety Charter and a strong supporter of Mission Zero's vision. They believe in safety at work and at home, whether that be urban or rural. Actually, Mission Zero is very strongly what I believe because I want to make sure that not only my employees and the contractors at site are safe, but we need to carry that message beyond the workplace. So that means I want to do as a company and as an individual to contribute to safety at the private homes, in the farming communities where our customer base is, and of course, to make sure that the families, the friends, and of course also our employees outside work are kept safe. A lot of people think it's our goal and our target, but the way I look at it, we start every day at zero. And to me, when we say mission zero, that is to me again, what commitment are we willing to make to make sure that everybody uh, goes home safe at the end of the day and we maintain that zero because it, you know it's not, it's not a target, we're already there at the beginning of each day. So uh, it's what we're willing to do for each other, what we're willing to do for our crews, our maintenance people, uh, uh, everyone here working on site. Uh, just to make, make sure that, that uh, we do things right the first time. Mission Zero is moving towards zero injuries uh, in the workplace and hopefully, hopefully we instill that culture in people that they take that home and they uh, give that information to their spouses and to their children so that when they go into the workplace or when they get into situations that are unsafe that they can uh, realize that they're in a hazardous situation or in a risky situation and they can make good, uh, good decisions. So it, uh, we like to think that we have a part in that. Well, first of all, Safe for Choice is not a campaign. It's a way of working. We have, first of all, golden rules, what, uh, which everyone has to follow. These are basic safety rules. We have, in addition to that, the safety meetings, the improvement activities, the incident investigations. So a full bunch of activities which helps us to identify risks and to mitigate them. We have safe work permits in place. We have so-called safe job analysis in place. That's standard in the industry, but we want to go beyond because 
there is also a behavioral part of that. And very often the forms, the procedures are followed, but the behavior is not done. So Safe by Choice has a focus on the behavioral change as well. And the investigations, whenever we have a shortcoming, will help us to identify where are the shortfalls and what are the uh, next steps, what are the improvement potentials. And we will not stop until we have zero injuries. One of the biggest names in this province's construction industry is Graham. You see their signs on major building sites helping to shape the landscape of our province. The familiarity of the Graham construction name may come from the fact that it's 90 years old. Started in Moose Jaw, it operates from BC to Ontario and across the US. Grant Beck is CEO of the company. He joined them more than 25 years ago on the front line, then went on to get an engineering degree and began to climb the management ranks, now at the top. He's seen the issue of safety from all angles, from the labor side to the boardroom. The company upped its game on workplace safety in a big way about a decade ago. There were all the usual reasons for sharpening their focus, regulations, straight up business imperatives, and employee morale. But we sat down with Beck to discuss how their company has seen its workplace safety programs evolve. The real core starts with leadership from the top, starting with myself, that really a uh, strong commitment to it. And eventually you can develop a culture of safety. And that's pretty exciting when you actually get the culture of safety to the grassroots, to what we call our front line. So it's sort of dropped down from the top down, but once you get to the culture, it's culture from the bottom up. For Beck, this is not just business, it's personal. Early in life, he experienced the loss of a teenage sister, a brother at age 16, and a high school buddy. It underscored the importance of safety. Unless you've been there, unless you've seen it, it's hard for individuals to understand the actual impact it, it has on the co-workers. For a co-worker that's involved in a, in a major incident or, or heaven forbid, a, a death, it's life-changing. You know, it, it leaves a scar that you never get over. You can, it can heal, but there's always still a scar there. For Beck, the memory of losing someone close is never very far from the surface. Last year, he addressed the subject before hundreds of Saskatchewan CEOs during a panel discussion at the Health and Safety Charter signing ceremony. In early 2011, um, we had a fatality. There was a young man, iron worker, 26 years old, that was killed. I talked to the family. I talked to the father and the uncle. But the most stark thing was that I couldn't talk to the mother. And there was a reason, because she was too distraught to talk to anybody. And I knew why. I'd experienced it. And while there's no doubt that an injury at home or at work is potentially life-altering and can take a huge emotional toll, Beck still has a business to run and a financial reality that's also part of the equation. It also has huge business impacts if you want to just look at the business part of it. I believe that even if you did everything right and you aren't penalized, uh, having a death on your, on your site is, is probably a million dollar starting point if you've done everything right just the lost productivity and, and investigations and, and all the things you have to do to uh, support your people, your teams, you know, the injured worker and their families. It's seven digit numbers. It's far more significant than people give it credit for. Companies looking to create or to strengthen their own workplace safety programs probably start out with regulatory compliance in mind. It's because they have to. But Beck says that quickly becomes secondary. Over the years, I think regulatory is a great starting point, but it doesn't drive the business properly. So we recognized fairly early on that, that we needed to get safety to where it was actually paying uh, for the business instead of the business paying for the safety. And that took a few years, but once you turn that page and you get it to the bottom, it certainly has been uh, a business driver for us as well as a moral driver. Learning from the experiences of seasoned players such as Graham can provide an example or offer up best practices that will help shorten the learning curve. So start at the top. For Beck, that meant making senior management accountable for safety. To 
drive leadership from the top down, we actually started implementing leadership scorecards. So it was part of their mandate, it was part of their scorecard. Their scorecard gets rated based on how well they do in, in giving leadership to safety. And eventually it, it fell into uh, what we call our performance scorecard, which is also drives our, our employees' bonuses at the end of the year. So that was, I think, to get their attention. But as, as time went on, you know, we had to ingrain safety much earlier into our process. It's what we call our leadership engagement indicator. Um, so we have a, it's, it's a very simple program and everyone from our CEO all the way down through the ranks uh, is challenged to do specific tasks related to safety on a certain frequency. And we track these and we actually you know, provide the feedback to the groups and it, it becomes a bit of a challenge to people. If someone is falling a little bit below the 80% target that we've set, the next month they're above it. It's, it's a way to measure yourself against your peers and what can be measured can be managed. As the company pushed the commitment to workplace safety throughout the organization, people like health and safety manager Shane Mills picked up the ball. He's closer to the front line, and it's his job to ensure that everyone goes home safely every day. We put the um, ownership back down to our field crews, our, our, our craft workers are the guys in the field that are actually doing the work, putting the hammers to the nails and uh, boots to the ground. Uh, those are the guys that do the work for us. We need to empower them with giving them the right tools, the education, uh, the work procedures to do their jobs efficiently and, and as safely as possible. So we've incorporated that within our, our work scopes. We've incorporated that within our training. Uh, we do a lot of uh, individual training. We do a lot of group training as well. One is what we call our annual safety day. Um, and that's followed by an annual environmental day. It really brings an awareness to all of our people and our clients to the importance that we, we put on safety. Um, a second thing that, that we've done that has been very successful for us is every week we gather over the phone and in boardrooms uh, our key leaders on the sites, which is our project managers or superintendents, and we have a safety call. And so we go to every project and we ask each project to tell us have they had any incidents, what are the near misses that, that they've had, and we share that information across our entire business. It's been very successful uh, and really tells us, you know, immediately what type of trends we need to be addressing right away. Interestingly, the implementation of standards and a broad commitment to eliminating harm has not reduced productivity. In fact, it's done the exact opposite, according to Mills. That may well have been the most successful aspect of this program. The cultural shift with giving the people in the field the tools or the accountability or the ownership for their work areas and how they are able to do their jobs. Uh, if we give them the ownership of what they need to do and where they need to get to and give them the tools to do their job properly, um, we've, we've shown that once they've uh, got the tools and once they've taken ownership of the stuff, their productivity uh, expands, their productivity gets better, their, their feel for their or their pride in their ownership because they are craftsmen and their pride in their work, their pride in their product that they're producing uh, seems to just snowball. It's a snowball effect that actually accelerates and, and everybody seems to get on that page. To drive home the message of safety first, the company has coined a phrase, a slogan that's easy to remember. It's called the road to zero. It is uh, a commitment for uh, zero incidents uh, or zero harm. Uh, we, um, and that goes for injury, um, uh, incidents, which is our mechanical and, and accidents and all of, um, and those types of things, property damage, and the environment as well. So uh, we want zero harm to, to all of those. So it's, uh, it is part of our slogan. It is, is what we live by and is what we have mandated to have accountability to all of our operations. And joining me in studio right now is Doug Kelm. Doug is the former CEO of Sask Energy. And Doug, I, uh, first of all, thank you for joining us uh, on set today and talking about how you have made safety a big part of the culture within Sask Energy. And you've come off, I guess the whole province has come off, a really quite a remarkable sort of 10-year period, that 05 to 2015 mm -hmm. period where we saw an awful lot of expansion. 
a lot more volume of gas going out, you guys are busier. When you get that kind of pressure where the economy is growing, you're required to meet more and more demand, how do you match that with trying to still keep the safety message going? It's just a, a great point, Paul, and you know, something we spend a lot of time on because intuitively when you're moving more natural gas, uh, that means you're busier, that intuitively has a risk relative to safety. And took it head on, uh, I, I give all the credit in the world to Mission Zero as a, an overarching provincial uh, objective that I think very, very much fit with what we were trying to do. And that was at the time when we were becoming uh, increasingly active and busy, we wanted to be safer. And uh, we spent a bit of time on that, of uh, thinking about, well, okay, what are the fundamentals? And it, it starts out with individuals taking responsibility. It has uh, the company taking responsibility. And I think ultimately that translates into safety for the public. Let's just step back for a second. How much busier is Sask Energy today than it was, say, 10 years ago? And just to put a little context sure. on to the challenge that you were faced with. When, when you look at it, we're moving 40% more gas every day than we did in 2005 sort of time frame. So significant amount. Uh, it, that certainly meets, uh, if we think of it, some of the potash expansions that have occurred, uh, fertilizer expansions, uh, the enhanced oil around the province, and power generation. So uh, as well, we saw, we've seen residential and commercial growth certainly in the two big centers, but all around the province. So, you know, that was our challenge, is, is uh, we were moving more gas through those pipes. Uh, at the same time, that, that puts uh, uh, stresses on our employees. Uh, you know, last year we made 13 million kilometers around the province to make sure public safety is front at hand. So that was the challenge. At the same time, well, you can break that down to saying, well, but the fundamentals around is about being safe when you do that work. So you've got more volume, more pressure on your people to get things done. You've got more places to get to. Intuitively, that would suggest to you that's going to bring more risk and you had to address that and, uh, we did. and and you ended up getting a good result yes we did and you know it it, it did align with uh, certainly at the same time uh, being one of the uh, first companies that had the opportunity of signing the charter within mission zero uh, it was really focusing on the three p's of safety as we put it. Uh, it it's about personal safety it's about the processes related to safety and ultimately, it's about public safety, which the employees are part of that public. So we broke those three down and, and some, spent some time on it. It starts with individual responsibility, and it's all around the risk assessment. We saw that at times, um, inevitably, when you're moving more natural gas, there's some big projects that you need to be very careful around. And you know, so historically, that was something we were quite good at. But we also have to remember that um, a day like today, we'll be in a thousand different work sites because we'll be at customer premises. Some of those premises, we haven't been there in 30 years. So it's the slip, trips, and falls that we have to think about as well on that personal side. So really spend time on both of those. It's, it's about the individuals taking the risk assessment to the next level, identifying hazards, and away we go. Uh, Process-wise, well, it's up to the company to make sure the structure's in place so that that employee feels always comfortable that they are going to be making the assessment a risk and if they feel that there's a challenge there, they're to stop, get help, get the supervisor involved and, and manage that. And then finally, uh, it, it, it escalates into, from a public safety point of view, um, about 23,000 times a year, uh, the public will call us to, to say, we think there might be an issue here and we need to come out. Well, you need to combine that personal safety approach with the process to ultimately achieve public safety. Yeah, I suppose in some cases, your people by definition are heading into what could be considered a dangerous situation, a dangerous zone. You got a gas leak, that's not very safe. Sure. Uh, so by definition, your people are facing that and yet you've come away with a good outcome. Right, so the first responder role is, is in, you know, uh, over the last 10 years, we've developed a lot closer relationship with the fire departments across the province, volunteer in the smaller communities, and certainly the professional fire departments in Regina and Saskatoon, focused on the very thing you're talking about, that first responder role, again, it's about being safe and making safe. And, uh, you know, taking some different approaches from a process point of view, and I think it's worked out very well. I've heard repeatedly from business leaders that we've talked to about this program and, sure. and about Mission Zero in general, that uh, having injured workers or people getting hurt on the work site, 
is counterproductive. You don't have those people to work for you because they're in recovery mode. And in fact, safety ends up making you more productive. Not It's not a, an onerous thing that impedes productivity. In fact, it increases productivity. That's correct. I totally support that, and I, I see it showing up um, in, in, in the two uh, dimensions you gave. One is you have employees available every day because they're healthy. And, uh, you know, part of our journey was making sure that they were thinking uh, about risk identification as ho at home as well as work. And uh, that, that's something, again, that was aided by Mission Zero's uh, focus several years ago. And if you have that employee there, you're going to get more things done in a day. But the second was around them thinking about, is there a better way to do this? Is there a better way that we collectively are going to be safer? But it turns out those safer ways usually are more productive ways to do work. Sometimes it's technology helping. Sometimes it's good old process improvement. So you're absolutely right. Those two go together to say, wait a minute, I'm safer, but I'm also more productive as a company. Now, a little earlier in this conversation, you alluded to signing the, uh, the, the leadership charter. Uh, I'd like to explore that with you a little bit. I mean, what was your thinking? You were an early adopter of this thing. You were one of the first signatories. And what does it give a CEO of an organization in terms of influence to stand up in front of the community and say, I'm signing this, I'm making a pledge? Does it give you leverage within your own workplace and the rest of the community? I think it really does. And, and I think, you know, the, it pulls on the one thing that I think we're very fortunate in this province to have, and that's the Saskatchewan will. That we were, we were saying, look, uh, and I was saying, we're, we're stepping up as a company that the, the light's going to shine on relative to the mission zero expectations. And we as a company have to demonstrate and achieve or exceed those expectations. And I think it, 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 it pulled on everybody in the company to say, you know, this is part of a bigger provincial uh, uh, desire to have people go home safe at night and stay safe at night. And I, I think it was very, very helpful. Uh, it got integrated into uh, every year uh, in the springtime, uh, the executive uh, hit the road and we uh, do plant floor uh, safety meetings across the province. And the mission share at zero signing of the charter was a big part of that, of um, not only talking about it, but then uh, mission zero does a great job of showing how have you progressed as a charter member and how do you compare to yourself and to others. And I think that's, that, that kind of transparency is very important in stepping up. We've got maybe a minute left to talk about this, but I'd like to just, if I could, get you to uh, talk about how it affected the culture of your own organization. Was there a, a noticeable change in the outlook that your people had, your organization had? It, I, absolutely, I believe it is. And I, and I think it fit with the internal uh, uh, mantra that, that very much aligns with Mission Zero is, is, is uncompromised safety. To, to never put yourself or a colleague or the public in a situation where you're, you're increasing your risk relative to safety. And, and that's what Mission Zero is all about. It's about uh, this province not being happy until we get to zero. And I believe yeah. we'll get there. And did you get uptake from the employee, the frontline worker? They grasped this and they, they really took it and ran Very with much it. so, very much so. I, you know, and, and I think uh, they, they're interested. Where are we at? And, uh, you know, we've been fortunate in the last three years. Uh, we've set um, um, a, a record in terms of, of uh, safety performance from a uh, total injury rate. Uh, and and uh, you know, there's always a comparison, well, and how's the province doing? So I, I think it's a contributor to the province having the desire to being leaders in safety. Doug, thank you very much for taking the time to explain to us how Mission Zero has impacted your organization and your perspectives on it. Appreciate that. Thank you, Thanks. Paul. And that uh, concludes our program for today. Thank you for joining us, and join us next time for another edition of Zero.